this is probably the perfect time to stop and tell you that we are about to enter back into Sue's home, where we are literally going to be talking to Sue from Portland, Oregon, and Cece, who grew up in Santa Cruz, California, on what it was like growing up during World War II. We are back with Sue, who we had interviewed in regards to growing up during the Great Depression. And that was a hit, that was awesome. Now, we have my mother joining me, and we're going to be talking about World War II. And World War II, Sue, who was around 12 during the beginning of, of war, the war, and my mother, who was, did you say two? I was born in 43. Okay. So you were born during that yeah. time. Okay. But I grew up with a lady who lived through it. My grandmother. Yeah. We're, we've, I've got so many questions. I have so many questions. This is actually one of my favorite topics. So, um, yeah, so it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Now, you still live in Portland, am I correct, Sue? Yes. Did you, did you live in Portland through the whole entire um, duration of the war? Oh, yes. Okay. And mom, where did you grow? Where, where were you born and where did I you grow I was up? born and raised in Santa Cruz, California. An hour south of San Francisco. An hour south of San Francisco. So you were 12 when it started. And how old, how old were you when it, when it was ending? Well, it ended in uh, BJ Day. Uh, the war officially was over in 1945. So you were still... I was 15, 16. Yeah, you were still still a, a child, technically not an adult. Did your mom work outside of the home? My mother stayed home to raise me, except during World War II. She was a substitute school teacher. Oh. And she went back to substituting so, because they needed people to do that. Okay, so she did it out of a out of a necessity um, of what they needed. Yes. Okay. Yes. Did Nanny, you were raised by your grandmother. Now, did Nanny work outside of the home before and during? I don't believe so. My grandfather went back and became a, um, he was career military, and he went back to Fort Ord and became a MP there during the war. Interesting. Yeah, they got great big, huge candy bars at the at the commissary. Uh oh, <laughs> I like going with them. <laughs> I love the memories. Things not available to us yeah. civilians. <laughs> Just granddaughters of retired military. So, did your father go off to war? No, he served in World War One. Okay. And what did he do during World War II? He was a printer, job printer. Okay. So he, did he... He continued with his job. He continued yeah. printing. Mm -hmm. Now he printed newspaper, am I correct? Well, at one time he worked for the Oregonian, but by, by the time I can remember, he worked for a private company. They printed the tickets for the race horses, oh. horse races in Portland Civic Stadium and okay. things like that. I didn't Job know they had printing. horse racing. Interesting. Yes, they did. Interesting. Now, did you have, you had um, <clears throat> uncles. Go ahead. I'm sorry, it was dog racing. Dog racing? Dog oh. racing. <laughs> they that were chasing the rabbit. <laughs> they were chasing a rabbit? Pretend rabbit. You should do that with your dogs. I can't get him to get up to go chase anything. <laughs> they just want to walk. <laughs> so you had uncles mm -hmm. that got called up to, mm -hmm. that, that volunteered up for war. Well, I don't know about volunteering at the time, but everybody went. Yeah. My grandparents were the only one, and my mother, she stayed back, but she worked in the shipyards in Oakland. Your, your mom? My mom. Okay. And my dad, until he got called. Until he got called. Mm -hmm. And your family, do you remember how much of, how many of your family went or served? I had a cousin who enlisted in the Navy, but he was the only person that was of age 
that could be in the service in my family. Okay. My dad was too old and... Okay. Now, you're, you guys, we, we talked about community before. As a, um, as a neighborhood, was it very apparent that there was a war going on because people were, were, were leaving? Was that something that was... Did you have a lot of young men in your neighborhood? No, but we did have some Japanese neighbors. Mm -hmm. And this was... You know, one day they just simply were no longer there. Seriously, that is a yeah. question somebody has asked. What what was it like for them before the war? Um, how did the neighborhood treat them? As far as I know, they lived about a block away, and they did not have kids of, of any age that the other neighborhood kids were, so we didn't really have that much contact with them. I do have an interesting little tidbit about school. Yeah. Um, there was a Japanese student in my grade school class, and we used to have gymnasium, physical ed, as a program. And a man teacher, which was very unusual at that time, and uh, he instituted us setting up an organization where we elected a chairman and so forth and so on. The most popular boy in the class was Paul Hiramira, Japanese. We elected him and our <clears throat> gym teacher was upset. He sent Paul on a task to the principal for some reason or other. And he sat there in that gym and bawled us out oh my goodness. for Outrageous. electing a don't say it. Uh, yeah, a okay. Japanese person. A Japanese yeah. person. Oh. Oh my goodness. And he used some pretty explicit terms. A and here we were kids, you know, little kids, yeah. eleven, twelve years old. That's so, crazy. Yeah. We say that's crazy but I happen to have young kids that are in school and something similar is, is starting to happen like that in the schools for some of these young kids. Um, so that kind of is bone chilling to me to, to know that it was a teacher, that the kids had absolutely, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, the kids had absolutely no visual of color or race or whatever. They just knew that this kid was the most popular. They liked him we and liked everybody, him. everybody wanted him yes. to be there. Yeah. So you voted for him and then it was the adults in the school yes. that told them yes. no. They were busy te teaching hate. <sighs> exactly. And right after Christmas, Paul was no longer in school. Apparently oh, no. his family had also been sent to an internment camp. Oh. And we missed him. Yeah, I, I bet. That would be a loss. Yeah. Did you ever find out what happened to him? No. Uh -huh. When we wow. lived in San Luis Obispo for a while, many, many years ago, there used to be a lot of people that would talk about all the internment camps and there were a lot of Oriental people in there, that town. And a lot of, I don't know the correct say, way to say it, but a lot of the white people would buy their stores and then give it back to them when they came back from the camps. So they didn't lose their businesses and their homes, mm -hmm. which I thought was very nice. Yeah, and you read in history books that a lot of people hid their their items for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just realized this when the the war broke out. My mother's family owned a small hotel in downtown Portland and they had Japanese managing that hotel. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Japanese people were evacuated, so they asked my father if he would take over the management of that hotel. So he gave up printing and became the manager of the hotel. And those Japanese people were not the honorable ones that so many of them were and dad discovered that they had two sets of books oh, oh goodness okay they never came back they never came they back. never came back your neighbors that disappeared from a block away 
was that um, what was the talk in the neighborhood? I don't know. There, oh, just being a kid, I didn't hear any scandalous talk that yeah. might have gone on. You were kind it's of sheltered just, from it. They're gone. You know, mm -hmm. they're they're no longer here. The house is now for rent. So, okay. wow, just to happen overnight like that. Um, so your mom went back and substitute teached for school. After the war, did she continue doing that? No. She quit. Just okay. during the war, just to help. And came back to you. And your dad continued with his, with the printing business. No, he, he went to the hotel. Uh, stayed as the hotel manager. Okay, the hotel manager. Did he stop printing altogether then? Yeah. Okay. So, your parent, mo your, your mom worked in a shipyard in Oakland and what did she do after the war? Did she stop or did she continue working? I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea what she did after the war. We were not close, but yeah. my grandparents um, took care of me. Nanny was, all, Nanny was the one that was home and then Bobby... Bobby was home too, that was my grandfather. But during the war, he, he was already retired. He was in World War I too. And he came back and became an MP at the Gates in Fort Ord, Monterey. Okay. Now, um, And he your... also taught. He was a music teacher, yes. clarinet. He was a music teacher. Everybody learned the clarinet. <laughs> and at some point in time, he actually wrote music. And at some point in time, I want to, I have, we'd never heard the music ever. And he had written this really beautiful piece, apparently, but we had never heard it. Colonel Larson March. Colonel Larson March. And we had the Kingsburg Philharmonic or Sa Orchestra? Sanger. Or Salem. No. No, Sanger? I thought it was Out Kingsburg. Out on the highway. Oh, it might have been Kingsburg. I thought it yeah. was Kingsburg. We had a orchestra study it and, pl and learn it, and then when they were doing one of their open um free to the park and listen to us we actually got to be invited we were invited to go listen to it so it was the first time we had heard it and we recorded it it's a rough recording but at some point in time i'm going to upload that that's kind of interesting so your father served in the war do you want to talk about him for a bit everybody served in the war my father's side um the the women there were three or four three of them um, and they went to work in the fields and in Watsonville. It's a big agricultural area. And the guys, Uncle Seraphine and Uncle um, Mickey, they all, and uh, my dad and um, Uncle Frank, all went to the war. Frank and um, Seraphine were in the east, in the England. And um, my dad and uh, Uncle, Ser Uncle Frank, no. Uncle Mickey were in the Pacific. Now, was um, your dad a merchant marine? Yes. Okay, and uh, he came, when he came back, what did he do for a living? He managed a <coughs> um, big warehouse in the Bay Area. Okay. Yeah. He also was a private investigator for a bit of time. Yeah, he took them out. He took them out. Best tuna sandwich in San Francisco I've ever had. <laughs> they're, sitting, they're all messed up and like bums sitting on the sidewalk watching this guy. Yeah. <laughs> that was his retirement job, he said. Uh -huh. he, he, was, he, was a, uh, he was a cool grandfather. Yeah, I didn't see him very much, but he was kind of fun. Uh, so for both of you, the majority of, well, for you, the majority of your community literally went to war. Yeah. And for you, the people pitched in, but you didn't have a lot of the community, or did you? Um, I didn't know any different, you mm -hmm. know. 11-year-old is really not mature enough to realize everything that's going Everything's on. Going. I yeah. think that's fascinating because a lot of the interviews that you look at for World War II are all about the men and their service and everything. Very few of them are about what it was like for the children or for the kids on the on that aspect and what home life was like. Everybody got left behind. Everybody got left behind. <coughs> um, 
what did the community do to keep up with the repairs and the housing, things that needed to be taken care of at home that the men normally would have done? That would be a bigger question for you because my grandfather was there and he fixed everything. Not sure how well, but he fixed it. Did your grandfather go and fix things for other people in the community? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. We lived on a, at that time, it was a little farm way out in the country. Now it's like the middle of everything. Now it's an auto zone parking lot. Yeah, I know. I went back to look at it. I was very disappointing. Yeah. What about you? <coughs> did you. My dad was a fixer, so <laughs> we didn't have too many problems. Did he go around and help other people fix Not things? Not that I know of. Okay, no. interesting. Yeah, so in England, they, I'll show this and then I'll, I'll show them and then I'll show you. In England, they did um, pamphlets and I'll have a better picture of them. They did pamphlets on make, do, and mend, which is how to, um, that's a compilation of all of the original pamphlets, how to mend things, how to make things last, how to enlarge dresses, and then they would give this one looks really interesting. pamphlets on um, eating for victory, how to make food last, how to save your harvest, best ways of extending butter life and stuff. So one question that butter. we had, <laughs> they were because they were rationed really, really bad. Oh yes, oh yes. Yeah, yep. I remember the margarine came in a little packet with a little spot of red, yes. and you had to sit there and. That was the kid's it. job. Yeah, we I know. That's where I remember that. The, <laughs> to get the color so we would think it was butter. Yeah. They must have been rationing that pretty heavily. Oh, my gosh. I had bacon once during the war. Was invited to breakfast by some people who owned their own grocery store. Ooh. And these things were available, but in such tiny amounts that, you know, who were they going to sell it to? Whoever they sold it to, everybody else would be mad. So they invited us to breakfast and we had bacon. <laughs> the only time I can remember having it during the war and it was so good. I just bought bacon at the grocery store a couple days ago. It was so expensive. It went from three sixty nine a pound to five sixty nine a pound, and I was like, mm, "You want the thin cut now, don't you, honey?" And he's like, "Well, I like thick cut." And he looked at the prices, and he's like, "I'll deal with thin cut." <laughs> <laughs> well, and instead of cutting it in half, you cut it in thirds, which is what I have done, and which. If we were lucky enough to get it, we would do during the war. We made lots of adaptations to our eating and buying shoes and all the other items that were rationed. Explain the buying of the shoes. How did you adapt buying the shoes? You were very careful where you walked. The kids got to go barefoot during the summer because you it took a ration stamp to buy a pair of shoes and when you finished your ration stamp, you didn't get any more shoes. So you so. had ra 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 ration stamps? Oh, yes. Okay. I did not know this. So Nanny did, too. What mm. did you do? Meat was rationed. Canned goods were Sugar. rationed. Eggs. Gasoline. Um, the average person was allowed four gallons of gasoline per coupon. And I think the duration was a week, maybe it was two weeks, but you, if you planned to go to the beach or something from Portland, you saved your gas ration because you, you'd take the streetcar or you'd walk or, you know. It. Which was good for the people in Portland, but the ones of us who lived farther out. Well, of course they the had different ration systems too. The farm ration was uh -huh. different from the regular, you know, it just yeah. depended if you needed the gas for your livelihood, uh, you were allowed more gas, but ours was four gallons per coupon. And you only had one car in those days. You yeah. didn't have two or three cars, you know. Apparently a lot of so. them were up on blocks when the gas, the tires ran out. Well, of course, the gas was rationed because they didn't want to use the rubber. There was no synthetic rubber. And 
the rubber was needed for the army. So that's why they rationed gas to save the rubber for the service. Really, not to save the gas? At that time, no, either. that wasn't as important as saving the rubber. Is that why shoes were rationed? Because their soles were rubber? I, that very possibly had something to do with it. I don't know, you know. I just know that they were rationed. I didn't know that we had rations like they had in, in England because I've studied a lot about England's rations. Um, I suspect they were more heavily rationed yeah. than we were because yeah, they were longer. involved in the action. They were still yeah. rationed into the late 50s. Yes. But, um, but I always wondered. I knew there had to be something here, but I had always wondered what it, what, what it was and what it was like. So how much butter did you guys, did you, were you rationed on butter? I'm sure we were. We just didn't have butter. I don't remember all the details on that particular item. But, but I remember you had a friend that had a farm with a cow. Yes, yeah, but they didn't <laughs> furnish us any butter. I'm sure they had one cow in oh. a big family, so I think they probably okay. used every bit they needed. They probably did. I found a very sneaky way to get bananas. Nothing could be shipped in either. See, the war interfered with Shipping. things coming, imports, my uncle broke my heart when he told us we would not be having Swiss cheese because I was of an age where I thought all cheese, Swiss cheese, came from Switzerland. And of course they couldn't waste the <laughs> cargo space for cheese. I was just heartbroken. <laughs> was he messing with you or was yeah. he serious? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it took me a while to figure it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so back to the shoes, what did you do when they wore out? Well, I never, I was not that hard on my shoes. I don't know of anybody that ever really had a problem with shoes, but okay. there was the possibility. And you didn't go around scuffing them. You know, like I say, all the kids went barefoot in the summer because saved on shoes. Saved on saved shoes. Saved coupons. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> Mom, as a kid growing up in the World War II era, what was like? What was life like for you? Did you know there was a war going on? And how did that impact you and in the area around you as a child? Well, no, I didn't know there was a war going on because that was only two. You were two. Um, but... And we didn't have a lot of people really, really close to us at that time. We were still out in the country. And, um, but I know that, they, that my family was saving things. I remember them rolling aluminum foil or whatever it was called. Oh, aluminum and then foil. Balls, oh, my, and it yes. got to be big balls. I thought that was really cool. But you couldn't play with those. And, <laughs> Did um, you play with them? No, I wasn't allowed to play with those. <laughs> and my grandma canned everything. She had two acres and pretty much three quarters of it were gardens. She at one time had a cow, but I think that was much later. And she planted everything. And my grandfather supposedly helped her. I do have one picture of him with a shovel in his hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, she had a lath house and she had, the chinchilla house wouldn't have been there at that time. Were uh, the chickens there at that time? Oh yeah. We had chickies. You had chickies. Which having chickies was fun until you had to not have them anymore, and that was traumatic. Um, okay, I, I have a side note. I have a side note. So we have chickens on our homestead, but in order when I cannot, I have to plan because we have coffee once a week, and I have to plan when I'm going to boil the chicken to make sure that she's <coughs> not at the house because she doesn't want to see the chicken with the chicken feet boiling. When I was about eight years old, my aunt in Watsonville, I was visiting her and um, my father's sister, and she was cooking chicken soup. Okay, well I walked by the stove and the pot was on it, and it was boiling up a storm, and I looked in that pot and there was a claw coming to the top. I ain't anything to do with that chicken. 
I understand that that's the most flavorful part oh, yeah. of the broth. Yeah. <laughs> How are you eating? You cut him, you peel him, what do you do? Suck on his teeth? No. <laughs> no. Oh, no, you peel you peel the, the chick the leg and then you take the peeled leg and throw it in the pot and it dissolves as it's boiling the chondritin and glucosamine and calcium and everything and all the cartilage just dissolves. So if that, I, if I had to nice. do that, I'm becoming a vegetarian. <laughs> it is absolutely makes the most amazing bone broth. Okay, but, so your nanny had a huge garden. Yes, she did. And chickens and mm -hmm. a cow at one time, but you're not yeah. sure if it was and, then. And um, I used to get a ride to school later in later years if I went out and fed the chickens. And then Uncle Glenn would give me a ride to school. He lived with us. Um, yeah, she had all kinds of things. Okay. What about you? Did you have, you told me before about your huge garden, about your garden. Well, small. Yeah. The people in town were digging up their yards to plant gardens because it was hard to buy. Victory gardens. Yeah. So what was the one thing that you, that everybody grew, or what were the, was the produce that everybody grew? Potatoes and green string beans. <laughs> really? <laughs> Now you canned the string beans. Oh yeah. Yeah, because we talked about the do the doctor that timed it. Yes, I remember Before that. Before we, he would sit down at the dinner table if we were serving beans. He timed to make sure that all the botulism had been <laughs> boiled out. <laughs> Being a little cautious. Um. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Okay, we're going to go back to the gardens in just a moment. Um, back to you, Mom. As a kid, what did you, What well, both of you, what did you guys do for fun on a day-to-day -day basis? And what what did you do for fun? Because then I have some more questions. We didn't have neighbors to play with through that period of time. Okay. Um, so it was just helping my grandma, playing dolls. I had a wheelbarrow, not a wheelbarrow, a wagon, which is now missing a limb of wheel. Oh. It went in the gar the basement with the four and now has three. So I don't have any idea what happened to that. So you had you, you played with by yourself mostly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you? Did well, um, our neighborhood had kids all ages and we played as usual. All together. And occasionally we would go to the movies and watch the news reels. Oh, and interesting. See, this is before TV, so you either listened to the war news on the radio or you went and saw the news reel. Remember that music? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> scary. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys both have chores? Oh, yeah. Oh, certainly. What kind of chores did you have, Sue? Oh, well, I got to dust the Venetian blinds. Oh, I'm sorry. And <laughs> that was a lifelong the silverware, job. which is why when I more or less inherited my mother's silver tea set, I refused to take it. <laughs> I could have showed you how to clean it like that. Oh. oh. Now, what kind of chores did you have? Um, well, I know I had to feed chickens. And, and you uh, got to ride to school. And I got a right to school because we lived a little ways. Um, we helped Nanny most of the time, pulled weeds. Oh, I got five cents for each snail I found. And you couldn't try to bring the snails around again because she knew. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, I tried to recycle some of them sometime. You know, it's a lot of work picking snails. Absolutely. So I just put them around again and she, did, she knew. Well, she you, knew everything. You you were a lot richer than I was. Richer? I, you got a nickel. For a I snail. got a penny per weed to put ammonium sulfate in each weed and grind it in to kill the weeds. Ammonium sulfate? I didn't sulfate. even think about getting money for weeds. I just did that out of the kindness of my little heart. Well, see, this was in the city and oh, we yeah. had to keep our yard clean oh. and one penny a piece for ammonium sulfate which is an excellent way to get rid of weeds it's a fertilizer it's something she needs to know and too heavy a dose you see killed the weed but it also fertilized the ground around so the grass would come in thick and the weed didn't have a chance right there oh i already did <laughs> <laughs> oh, right there 
<laughs> ah, goodness. Yeah, you my... can also make up a strong solution and hip the uh, weeds with a broom. You know, people think I'm crazy out there sweeping my yard. You're really killing weeds. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll vouch for you. Mom, what kind of other chores did you have? Well, we didn't have any animals, but, you know, like dogs and cats. Uh, I did have a parakeet once I had to take care of, but he bit me and I don't like him much anymore. Um, he was on my shoulder and he just came up and bit me. Creepy little thing. Um, so yeah, just keeping my bed in my room clean, making my bed every single solitary day. Tell me about you making your bed. As I've heard stories about you making your bed. Oh, and she, I think she, she knows pretty much. No, no, no. no. I thought no. you just pulled the sheets back and let them air out for a few minutes. And then you cut, that's because my grandma said that. And then you pull them up and you put your bedspread over nice and soft and pile up your pillows. What did I do wrong? There was something about a quarter. Oh, if you lost a tooth. My stepfather once said that, um, no, that wasn't a tooth thing. If you make your bed correctly, because I visited him a couple of times, it has to be so tight that you can bounce a quarter on it. I never made any money on that. <laughs> had to make square corners at the bottom. They call them hospital corners? Well, we call them square corners, mm -hmm. but I think it's the same yeah. thing. Yeah, I do that now. So here's a question that is roaming around in internet space. When... By now you have learned that my mother got paid five cents for every snail that she brought, and I never in my life would have thought of ways to recycle a snail. And you have learned um, a great or an interesting way that they got rid of weeds in the olden days and that Sue got one penny for each time that she killed a weed. Um, it's very interesting listening to them talk. They grew up both on the west coast, one in the northern part and one in the southern part, one in a very big city and one in the country. The interesting thing is that they both lived actually very different lives, but similar. I think what I have gained the most out of this, out of listening to them, um, shoes were rationed. That was interesting. Um, and that the children knew. And that they both, both families canned, processed their food and canned. Um, and, and bacon. Bacon was a delicacy. Bacon was a special occasion. And I really thought that was interesting how she was talking about there were such short supplies that the grocer didn't want to have fights, so he found ways of sharing the product by inviting people over for dinner or for breakfast. Very interesting takeaways. So join us. I'm going to end it here because this was a two hour long interview. I'm going to end it here and we're going to come back and we'll see what they have, what we have in store now. Um, it's actually very interesting. Again, I'm doing this on the point of view of what it was like being a kid, two and 12 to 15. What it was like, what they thought of, what they saw, how they interpreted what they were growing up. I don't want it to be the old woe is me, um, this is war, right? We're actually facing very interesting times right now, currently in our day and age. The information that I gained in this interview was that no matter what, we're gonna be okay. Our kids are gonna be okay. And I really, I really wanted to share this with you now because I wanted you, I wanted you to hear how two people that grew up during World War II, their memories, they're laughing about some things. They're telling you what it was like and they have some fond memories in there. So we're gonna be okay. I'll see you on part two. Thanks for watching. say hello. You s he likes his face. He likes to see himself. Mm-hmm.
kittens. Get kittens, they said. Kittens will be fun, they said. Yeah, get kittens. Like literally. Henry, are you just gonna sit there and watch your brother bite your neck? 